So I was, it's also the final book in the series, the Regency Vows series, which I have loved. I've read every single book in it. I think everything except for like the third book got a four star. Everything else got either, no wait, hold on. I said that wrong. <laughs> on Friday, I think it was, I ended up finishing Icebreakers and then starting a book and now I've rearranged everything because I don't want to read that book anymore. <laughs> so once at a time. So there's some similarities between, if there's some differences, Hold on. Hello everybody, my name is Kelsey and we're about to get very, very nerdy with week three of the Magical Readathon. So as you can see, it looks, my background's a little bit different. Um, we've officially moved the library downstairs to where it's going to end up. And we kind of love it. And kind of, we very much love it. It's not done yet. Like these shelves behind me are still needing to be, to, to go through. But it's, it's, it's where it needs to be. So we're going to kind of unveil it at the end of the month. I'll show you guys in... A video so you have that to look forward to but I'm here to officially start the week three uh, vlog so it's actually Thursday <laughs> so yesterday I didn't I don't know what it was it was super gross and rainy first off and I just didn't want to do things so I was very unproductive yesterday but I did read a lot because I've already finished a book and I've started another one. So between vlogs, I started To Woo and To Wed by Martha Waters, which wasn't on any TBR, but the audiobook became available for my library. And it had like a, like I had waited forever for this book and the wait was still ridiculous. Like I looked at it and there was at least 15 people after me. So we were looking at like two to three months. So instead of like postponing this, I decided just to stick it in. So I put this one in for psionics and divination, I think is how you pronounce that, which was prediction bingo, which is, I did do it. So I'll plop it here and as I talk about it. Um, and it was basically like you created a bingo board before you started reading the book with your predictions of what was going to be in this book. So I'll talk you through kind of what I did. I did a four by four grid, uh, because I ran out of things to say. So this is the fifth in a series. I think everything except for the third book, which got a three star, uh, got a four or five star. So I kind of knew what I was getting into with this one. It follows this friend group and each book is a respective romance. This one is between Sophie and West. It's a second chance romance because they kind of were a thing a long time ago, seven years ago. And then it turns out that he got in an accident. And when he woke up from the accident, she had married somebody else. And so they've always kind of, their friends have always been together and like around. And so like they have been included in all of this stuff, like all of their summer parties and stuff like that but it's always been a little awkward between them and in this book Sophie is the oldest of five and one of her other sisters Alex had also gotten married and has been widowed actually all of her sisters are married but she and Alex are the only two that that are widowed at this point and Alex has found a new suitor and is very much in love with this new suitor but won't marry the suitor because she's afraid that Sophie like she will leave Sophie alone so Sophie creates a spark with West where they pretend to be engaged in the hopes that it'll push Alex to actually go through with the wedding and then they can pull out at the last minute. Things happen. So in my prediction bingo, which I'll put here, I assumed this was going to be a four star or higher. I thought it was going to make me laugh out loud. Um, I thought there was going to be some sort of grand declaration at the end. I thought I would finish it within two to three days. I would tab at least one scene based on what the plot was and how, you know, he just woke up and she was already married, I figured there'd be like a miscommunication issue somewhere. Um, I had read lots of reviews, so I, I kind of put in, I didn't know if this was going to actually happen, but I put in that it was going to be my new favorite in the series. I said that the smut in this book was going to be significantly less, not gone, but less than the other books. That I was going to set the audiobook speed to 1.75. That I'll mention something about banter in the review, that, that I won't have any trigger warnings to report, um, that we'll see all of our previous couples, or at least one of our previous couples, that the first kiss in this book, um, I say first kiss because they did have like a previous relationship, but the first kiss for this time period would be called a mistake, 
um, that it would make me cry, <laughs> that they would have like a girl powwow power kind of like m moment and that it would intrigue me enough to stop because I was going to have the audiobook in, that it would intrigue me enough to stop whatever I was doing and pick up the book to read along. So I'll plop up my little, I won't say which ones I did. So if you don't want to be spoiled, don't look too closely. But here's my tic-tac-toe board of what I actually ended up doing. So I actually got two bingos. Yay. So I don't know what my benefits or like reward is going to be. I haven't decided on that quite yet, but I can do something for myself. So yay. But I did end up giving this one four stars. I did actually have the arc of this. So I have a NetGalley review of this, which is why if you go on my Goodreads, the review of this is significantly longer than previous reviews. But I really enjoyed this story. I liked the story of Sophie and West because this is a couple that has been hinted at since I'm pretty sure the very first book. It's not my new favorite in the series. I still think the first one is the best one. And I'm honestly tempted to reread the first one because things are mentioned in here that are like alluding to stuff in the first book because West and James, who is the main male lead in the very first book, are brothers. So obviously West is going to play a big part, or at least show up in the first book, and Sophie kind of plays a little bit of a part in that first story. So I'm, I really want to reread that at some point, just when I have the time to kind of remind myself how I was introduced to all these characters. I did like the chemistry. There wasn't a lot of banter, really, in this one, which is why I will spoil this. I didn't mark that as I'm going to talk about it, really, because... There wasn't like, like the chemistry was there and I really liked the dynamic between Sophie and West and I liked that they were very open with each other about how they felt and that there was a little bit of a miscommunication, a little bit, but it was more, they just didn't talk and if they had talked, they would have figured everything out. Um, so I like that. I like that the problems in this book are like real world problems for them so like in the regency world so it wasn't just like made up things that they'll figure out it was like they actually had an issue that they had to figure out a way to work around because it was a pretty big glaring thing that would have stopped many other couples in regency time so liked it i loved the writing it's i'm so interested to see what Martha Waters now comes out with now that her like I'm pretty sure this was her debut series um is done what she's going to come out with now and how that's like what she's got in the future I liked this as the final book because we did see all of our other couples throughout this and they all played a pretty big part and it just felt like a good end like the way that they presented this story was a really good way to say goodbye to these characters and say goodbye to this world and I really liked that I really liked that there were some decisions that were made between our two couples that weren't like they were a little bit different for the time period and I just I don't know like I really liked my time reading it I flew through it in like a day and a half or something like that so like I really liked it but I feel like there's not a lot to say about it because it doesn't feel like the most unique new Regency romance. Like I've read a lot of things that are very similar to this, but I did like our characters. I was a little disappointed by the writing only because I remember the first one being so funny and I feel like the first two being really funny. And even though they have their moments in here, I didn't ever really laugh out loud. I didn't really remember the writing being as funny as I had remembered it when I read the first few books. So I think I don't get me wrong, I loved this series and I loved every single one of them, but I am kind of glad that we have come to an end because I think any more books in the series and I would have run out of <sighs> intrigue, I guess, to pick up this series because I was starting to feel like it, it was very monotonous. There's a lot of the same stuff happening and all the stuff that I loved from the first book I either had gotten used to, so I wasn't picking up on in the next book or so I don't know there's just some stuff going on that I was just like this is the same thing over and over so I loved it don't get me wrong four stars really glad I read it but I'm very interested to see what else this author has in store for the future and what her next adventure is going to be is it going to be another historical romance are we going to get is she going to start in the contemporary vein I don't know but it just sounds I'm, I'm really interested to see what the future of her writing looks like so with that being done, I decided to go back to my required reading because believe it or not, 
I've finished almost everything except for one prompt that is not required for my career. So this week is the week that we tackle the required reading. I have four books, so I'm still on track. If I read two this week and two next week, I'll still be on track to finish everything that I need to for my careers, which is great. And I know the quest I can push off into the next month if I need to. I believe I can also do that for the licensing if I really need to. So this is what I've decided is this, this is the week that we're going to hunker down. And I would love to get through three of the four um because one of them is a graphic novel so I like to push the graphic novels to the very last week when I've either run out of momentum or I'm stressing about the fact that I haven't finished things that I want to finish and I can stick this in and it feels like I've completed something plus I still want to get to Beautiful Nightmares which is the really thick book for my dragon licensing so if I have like a graphic novel and a thick book next week I feel like I can get through it pretty quickly and so the three books that are still left on this TBR that are required are either there's one historical romance and two contemporary romances, and those I can get through pretty quickly. So the one that I ended up picking up was Icebreaker by Hannah Grace. I am, oh wait, I didn't move my, my, uh, what is this called? Bookmark. Um, I am 94 pages, so I'm in chapter 10. There are 50 chapters in this book, so I haven't, I've made pretty decent progress, but we're still pretty early on in this book. I don't know about how I feel about this. I am interested in the couple. I'm actually kind of interested in where this is going because I'm not entirely sure what the plot of the story is going to be based on where I am. What I know so far is that this follows our main two characters, Anastasia and Nathan. Anastasia is on the figure skating team for this college called California, it's University of California, Maple Hills. And Nathan is the captain of the hockey team. And so at the beginning of this book, basically the hockey team is known for pulling pranks and one of, there's two ranks one for the figure skating and one for the hockey team and the hockey team's rank gets destroyed and everyone thinks it's the hockey team that has done it and it's not so they end up both like both teams the figure skating and the hockey team having to use and practice on the same ice so scheduling's a little iffy and Asia's really pissed at Nathan because she thinks that the hockey team has messed this up and then later learns out that it's not exactly what she thinks it is but they're being forced to use the same a rink because he's the captain he's kind of taken over trying to mend fences and I don't know why he's chosen her specifically because I don't feel like she's the captain of figure skating like she's just she and her partner are trying to reach the Olympics and so maybe because she's the best one on the team he's chosen her I don't really like know the thought process of why she's the one that he is like pinpointed as the one that I need to get on my good side but he does and so the two of them are trying he's trying to get her to like be okay with the hockey team but it says something on the back about the fact it says but when Anastasia's skating partner faces an uncertain future she may have to look to Nathan to take her spot take her shot sorry so we haven't reached that point where I'm at yet but some I think something might happen to her uh, skating partner who honestly totally okay with. His name is Aaron. He is a dick and I hate him. So already I would say trigger warnings for conversations about weight in this book because Anastasia is really worried about her, her weight because Aaron mentioned a couple of times that if she gets any more pounds on her, he can't lift her and so she has to she's trying to like make sure she eats healthy and not a whole lot and she's got this guy that's kind of like a friend kind of like a a friends with benefit situation on the side who is really annoyed with that and is trying to get her to like eat like a person again because she doesn't eat at times so that's a conversation so if anything revolving like weight loss or because she's not like losing weight she's just like very very aware of how much she weighs so anything revolving that I would say trick warnings for so far so that's one of the reasons I don't like him is the way that he like talks to her and Nathan even picks up on the way that he talks to her and he does not like it either but I'm like I was I was at the second chapter I was in the second chapter of this very as you can see fun little illustrated cover and things sexually were happening and I was like this is too soon so not like between them just like in general and so I like I knew going in this was going to be a super smutty book and that the cover was going to be misleading but I figured we'd get into it a little bit farther before we started having scenes um but no no it starts like right away so 
I don't know. We'll see. That, that's why I'm on the edge is like, I don't care about the sport part of it, but it's not really focusing on the sport part, at least where I'm at. We're focusing on focusing. We're focusing on them trying to get through some stuff. And like I said, I don't really know where the plot is going to be, but I assume her partner, her skating partner is going to go somewhere else and something's going to happen and he's going to be disqualified. And so she's going to have to use Nate as a skating partner, which if that's the case, I cannot wait for those scenes. It's going to be so funny, but it's smutty and it might be a little too smutty, but I haven't, I don't know yet. We'll have to get to the end before I decide that officially. But this is the one that I have picked up and it's the one that I have been listening to. I got like to page 50 last night and I've been listening to a little bit more today. So I'm like not quite a fourth, but close to probably a fourth of the way through. It's a thick boy. It's like 400 pages, which is pretty thick for a contemporary romance. So I don't know. We'll see. I know this is the series. This is the first in a series of three, which is called the Maple Hills series. And I'm not feeling like I need more from the series. But once I'm done with this, we'll we'll see. It feels like a nice little palette cleanser, but I don't have a lot of in-depth thoughts. And I know that I'm super early and that's why. But anyway, so yeah, that's that's where I'm at. I finished a book and I've started another one. So I will continue to read this over the course of the next few days. And um, hopefully I can fly through this. I don't know. It's like I said, pretty thick, but my audiobook at my speed, which is I think 1.8, because I'm listening to it on Everand, and Everand doesn't have 1.75, but 1 1.8. I think I'm at like six and a half hours left, so I could probably get through that pretty quickly. Anyway, this was a bramble beginning, but here we go. Third week. Let's hunker down and get through some of the things that are required for my career. Oh, I didn't tell you. This was for Elemental Studies, which was to have a source of light on the cover. And as you can see, all those circles, I would interpret as like the lights in the ceiling. Sorry. Anyway, so let's let's dive in, get through some things that are required for my career. And then next week we can, I don't want to say goof off, but like we can, we can read some of the other things that are I've been putting off like that big, big old book about dragons. I'm honestly scared, but I have a backup. One of you guys gave me a middle grade graphic novel in my last video. So that's going to be my backup if I can find it at my library. If I can't get through the really thick book, but I would like to get through the really thick book because then I'm caught up as far as what I own in the series. Anyway, here's my thoughts. I talked a lot. I'm going to go grab my lunch now because it dinged while I was talking. And I'll take you along to whatever this week entails. I don't know. I'm broken out in my golden heart. Morning kiss more risk is too far. Just stay with me, not like 
Monday. Um, and I'm here to give you updates because as you probably saw on Friday, I think it was, I ended up finishing icebreakers and I'm starting a book and now I've rearranged everything because I don't want to read that book anymore. <laughs> so one step at a time. First, I finished icebreakers, like I mentioned. Um, I ended up giving this one four stars. I really enjoyed it as a story, but I think what I didn't love is that like right now in my reading, I don't want a lot of smut in my books. I don't know what it is. Like, I don't know why. It's just something that's like started this year, honestly. And I don't hate it. Like, smut's fine. Like, I enjoyed it. But like, this had so much in it to the point of like, after a while, I just started spacing out when those scenes happened because like, I was more invested in the plot and what was happening that way than I was in like the smutty scenes between these two. So I did go in with pretty high expectations when it came to the smut because that's what I'd heard as far as like a lot of people were saying that this was really good smut and like it is. If you are someone who loves smutty contemporary romances, you're going to love this book. It definitely has all that in it. I just was, I'm in like a headspace where it was too much for me. But I still enjoy the story. I was worried because it was a hockey romance. It's just like sports romances in general don't always work for me. So I was worried about that. But it was fine. I actually really enjoyed it. A lot of the plot didn't take place at like games and things. They just talked about practice and college life and stuff like that. So yes, hockey and figure skating are really big parts of the story because that's kind of their whole how they connect at the beginning. But it's not a huge part. I guess from what like I expected it to be which was great I enjoyed that but like it was still a pretty decent part and like you get to know the entire hockey team which I really enjoyed that was really fun and this is the first in a series of three the first two are out the third one I think comes out sometime this year and I've kind of like decided I'm going to soft DNF this series because like I've read this one and it's great and I enjoyed it and that's fine and I know the second one follows a character I can't remember there's two characters and I can't remember which one which book follows, but there's two characters that I really enjoy and we do follow them in the next book or two, but it's like, I don't feel like I need to own them. I think I need to be in the right headspace for it. So it's like, maybe I'll get around to the second one at some t someday, but like, I'm, I'm happy with, with this one, I guess. Um, but it's, it's like companion. So it's not really a series either way. I really did enjoy it. I know it sounds like I didn't, but I did. I really liked my time. I liked these characters. I liked seeing the conversations between them and how much they came to care for each other, especially like him talking about her because she's got a lot in this book. I think I mentioned in my last time I talked to you when I was talking about having started this book, I talked about that there's a lot of conversation about weight. Um, I would say like weight slash eating disorders within this because like I not sure I would consider it an eating disorder but she has a meal plan that her partner has created for her and it does not give her the nutrition that she needs and so with that there's also a toxic slash controlling friendship from said dance or not dance um figure skating partner so like just him as a person is a very toxic person and he plays a pretty big role in a lot of the disagreements between them because she wants to see a positive light in him and he actually sees him for like what he really is so just be wary of those two conversations like he is it's always with the same guy but like i said talk of weight and how much she weighs and what she eats and things like that is a very very big part of this book um, and you as the reader can see how unhealthy that is but she doesn't see it right away anyway just wanted to confirm what I had mentioned early on 
with all of that being said, I finished this. I can't remember what career it was for, but I finished it. Yay, it was required for my career. The next one that you probably saw me start was Artfully Yours, which I was, I have an arc of this. Um, it came out like two years ago. So is it really an arc anymore? But I have it on my Kindle. <laughs> and I put this in originally for the prompt of conjuration because it was, I had originally the Tempest of Tea and I wasn't feeling that one. So I put this one in because I was like, this is great. I'm in like a, a contemporary historical romance-ish mood. And I started this one and I think I'm about 30% of the way through and I decided to just pause it for now. Um, and I'll come back to it maybe throughout the month, but I'm not going to use it for this prompt anymore because I just like, I listened to a couple of chapters of it last night. And the fact that I started this on Friday and it's Monday and I'm only like four or five chapters in this is, I think says a lot. And I'm just really bored, honestly. It's about an art critic and this woman who is a forger, basically in Regency time. And she ends up working for him. And so it's a lot of like that stuff where like he's trying to figure out who this forger is and he's having her help him and she is the actual forger and trying to not. And so it's a fascinating subject, especially for like a Regency time period, but there's just something about this. I don't know why it's just not working for me right now. So I'm going to pause that and I'll pick it up when I'm more in the mood for it. It might be like, I might finish it by the end of the month. I might just pick up the audiobook occasionally, but we'll see. So what I've done instead is I've picked up the audiobook for The Dreamers by Karen Thompson Walker, which is in the same vein of like a contemporary sci-fi mystery thriller, like The Measure Was and The One, which are both books that I read earlier this year and really enjoyed. It's not very long. Like I said, I do have the audiobook from my library. <laughs> I just kicked my camera. I hope it didn't. I definitely changed positions. So I picked this book for Conjuration, which is the color wheel. So I'll plop up the color. Again, as you guys know, it's this very teal color. So you might be saying, Kelsey, that's not in this cover. You would be correct. However, the hardback cover, which I'll plop up here, does have it in. So that's what I'm going to use instead. Um, I'm just feeling like the, the thriller vibe. I don't know why, but there's just something about that that like right now is like what I want to pick up. So I picked this one up. It's not super long. I'm only about six chapters in. Um, so 30, 40 pages in this book. And I'm really enjoying it. It's just under 300 pages. It's definitely so far giving me the vibes of the measure actually it's giving me the vibes of all of the books that I mentioned the measure and the one both in writing um and in story development so this basically follows a college on a college campus a girl ends up falling asleep and then she cannot be woken up no matter what and then it kind of spreads to everyone on this floor like the same college dorm floor so they quarantine this floor and it's about like what this is and it's from different people's perspectives so we've got these college students specifically the one that we're following is this girl named may who was the roommate i believe of this girl and so you follow her as well as everybody else on this floor there's a doctor that we follow a young couple trying to protect their newborn baby two sisters um it says two sisters turn on each other for turn to each other for comfort when their survivalist father is preparing for a disaster. I don't know if he falls asleep or not, but like the illness spreads and no one knows what is happening. And so it's from a bunch of different people's perspectives. So it's written very similarly to the way that the measure was written in like that third person, very informative style, but it has all the different perspectives of like the one, which I found really interesting as well. So I'm curious to see what this was about. It, like I said, it has that very like sci-fi contemporary vibe to it so we'll see I'm enjoying it so far I'm not too far into it but I'm hoping to dive into that one I would love to finish this one by the end of this vlog that would be the goal but she just announced that she's doing productivity sprints for her patrons and so I am going to pop on there and hopefully that can help me dive through some of this because I was starting to get stressed there for a second because I was trying to force myself to read a book that I wasn't interested in and I feel much better now that I have changed the book I'm reading. So that's my update so far. I'm going to dive into more of the dreamers. I literally just started it this morning so I'm not that far into it and the audiobook is really it's not very long. It's like a 10-hour audiobook but the audiobook narrator which I have heard like I've read 
and listen to things from her before. Um, she's very slow. So I'm listening out to it on two times speed, which I don't do very often. So this, I don't think will be a problem for me to get through very quickly, but that's the update. I'll probably come back to you when I finish that book, probably tomorrow to wrap up this vlog, if I'm being honest. Um, I don't have a lot of plans. I, well, I mean, I have a lot of household plans, I guess is the way I can explain that. We have family coming over this weekend. So I need to get this house in a working state, <laughs> especially since we like, as you can see, moved the library. So that room is a hot mess. So I just need to do some cleaning and stuff. Um, so having an audiobook for that is great. But I'm going to jump on sprints right now because I think they're about to start any second. So I'm very excited. Mm -hmm. I just finished, as you saw, The Dreamers by Karen Thompson Walker, and I'm here to give you my final thoughts on it and just kind of wrap up this vlog. So I just give this one four stars because I did enjoy a lot of this world, although it's a very, very low four star. Um, and I think it's honestly comes down to the writing. That's why I got a four instead of a five or instead of a three. So this, I think I kind of told you, it reminded me of The Measure and The One. It's very, very reminiscent of that. It is told in multiple people's points of view. So that was very reminiscent of The One and the way that it was told. And you had like this big event or this big thing that was being told via a bunch of different people's perspectives. So that's kind of why it's similar to The One. It's similar to The Measure and the way it's written because it has a third person scientific way of looking at it, which is exactly what the measure did. So I liked this because it was reminiscent of these two other books that I fell in love with. This is not going to stick with me for very long, uh, mostly because I feel like there wasn't a conclusion. And I mean, there was, but I'm confused. And honestly, I'm not even sure what happened. It was like, here's this big problem that we have. And we kind of have pinpointed what this is a little bit scientifically, but then all of a sudden it's just going to figure itself out. And whatever this big problem is, is going to get resolved on its own without help from anybody. And it's just going to not be explained as to what happened. So there was a lot of like 
up in the air questions. I think this was meant to make you think because it talks a lot about dreams and what is reality and what isn't. And if you're dreaming, what are you dreaming? How realistic is that? Who is to say that what you're dreaming isn't real? Like this, there's a lot of conversations about that. So a lot of the loose ends were wrapped up, but it just was wrapped up in a way that I was very confused by. So I didn't love that. And then there's also a very big, a couple of big things that happen in this book to a few of our characters, um, just from some of the ones that we follow. What I wouldn't say is like a trigger for me per se, but is very, very close to stuff that's happening in my life. And I didn't love that. So did I read this at the wrong time? Possibly, but it still got a four star. Like I still kind of enjoyed the story and the way it was written. And it was a very interesting look at society. And it was also really interesting because this book was written in 2020, 2019, or it was at least it was published in 2019. And it is very reminiscent of COVID, which was obviously the year after. So I found that really interesting because obviously trigger warnings for quarantine and sickness and stuff like that. The situation is different than COVID. Obviously, this is a forced quarantine where yes, COVID was forced, but like this was more military than I think COVID was. There are some differences between obviously the sleeping sickness and COVID, but it was just really interesting to see the society and how people reacted to this sickness, who believed it, who didn't. One of the perspectives we follow um, is these two girls whose father is a doomsday prepper. And so like to see what he did when this stuff started to come out and I think that's I'm sure a lot of people did that as well when COVID came out or COVID started so like there's just some reminiscent social factors and like the way the government responded and things like that that were reminiscent of COVID so it was very interesting to see this book and how it was written a year or published a year before COVID happened and there were definitely some similarities there's a lot of differences though within the world as well. So it's, it's one, you know, one of those. There's just some co like conversations that I think were interesting, like the medical staff and how they were so underfunded and um, how they needed help and how they ran out of, you know, protective stuff because they believe that whatever is happening in here is airborne. And so having people basically be in hazmat suits there's just, there's just a couple of things. So it's really interesting to read this. I'm glad I read it. I don't think I'm going to hold on to it. I think this was an interesting story. I don't know what I expected from it, but I'm not sure I got that. Um, I'm still a little like, I'm still like thinking through what I actually feel about this book, but it was very reminiscent writing wise of books that I have loved this year. And that's probably why this was okay. Also, it was super short and there was always something happening. I was always interested in what was going on. And I had a very similar experience when I read The Measure where it was like I started reading and I wasn't really sure what was going on. And I was reading all these different perspectives and it was very confusing and I wasn't quite sure who was who and all that kind of stuff. And then I all of a sudden was hooked and I knew exactly who was who. And I don't know, there was just it was a very interesting reading experience similar to that. So I did it. I have officially finished the Dreamers, which was for, was for Conjuration. So, yay. And I have started another book. I'll tell you which one it is because I did, did rearrange my TBR a little bit. Surprise. Even more. Um, so this is for the prompt of Art of Illusion, which is to have the word game or play in the title in some way. And... I'm just in the spot where like I just wasn't feeling what I had picked which was a contemporary romance. It was a sports romance of sorts like one of the main characters I think was like involved in soccer in some way and I definitely want to read it because it's by an author that I love. I just wasn't feeling it you know. So instead I picked up The Rumor Game which is a YA book by Danya Clayton who I've read from before and I'm going to not say her name correctly. Son Sonia Charpocha? I will learn how to do that before the next vlog. Um, but it's a YA book, which is why I like was hesitant about it because it's, I've listened to like the first three chapters. I think I'm like half hour, 45 minutes into the book. And it feels very YA um, and it's writing and it's characters and all that kind of stuff, which is why I was like, I don't know about this, but I'm actually already hooked. So 
I'm not sure I'm going to get any of the characters right. I'll talk a lot about it more in my next vlog, I'm sure, because I'll be listening to it a little bit more today. But that's the one that's going to roll over. But basically, like, our main character, something happened to her. And it's, like, presented that, like, she snapped almost. And um, tried to... Tried to kill her boyfriend or tried to kill the person she thought her boyfriend was sleeping with. I don't know. But there's like a rumor that went around and it kind of destroyed her entire social life. And it's a new year. It's after the summer. And she's trying to get that back. And it follows her. It follows a bunch of people because it follows, I've already seen three different perspectives. We follow her. We follow a girl who is like her only friend at the moment, um, slash neighbor, who is just starting high school. And, or maybe not just starting high school, but a super young, like, probably like underclassmen in high school and then this other gr third girl who used to be friends with our first I'm sure we're gonna see lots of different perspectives but there's mixed media in it, and that's why I was on this list to begin with but like I said there's already been some like mystery surrounding this rumor and like what happens and there's so many trigger warnings for this book so I'm interested to see I think it's gonna be a very interesting social commentary on high school and how that works so I am actually already invested which is good because like I said the writing I was very nervous about um not because I don't think it's good just because like it's not what I want right now but there's just something about this book that's not interesting so I did pick this one up from the library and I've been listening to it and it's been pretty good so I'll talk more about that obviously at the beginning of next week's vlog but that is it I hope you guys enjoyed I think I only finished two books this vlog is that right I lied. I did finish three books. So we started the vlog with Tubu and Tewet, having already finished this by Martha Waters, which I put in for Psionics and Divination, which was the prediction bingo. We then had Icebreakers by Hannah Grace, which was for Elemental Studies, which had light on the cover. Oh, I gave, actually all of these got four stars. So there's that. And then of course, finished off with the Dreamers for Conjuration. So I got two of the four books that are required and I started a third one for books that are required for my career. So I think I'm gonna do good. I think I think we're we're pushing. I think we're doing. I've got one week left, a little bit less actually, exactly a week left. And I think I can do it. We'll see. But that's what's going on. Those are my thoughts. I hope you guys enjoyed this third week. Please let me know your thoughts on any books that I mentioned or how your third week went is going. Tell me all the things. How's your career? Are you participating in extra stuff? The quests? Tell me everything book related. Um, even if you're not participating, please tell me how your reading in April is going. I hope it's going well. If you like this video and I very much hope that you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below if you'd like to be part of this awesome growing family. I've also got all my social media down there as well as other fun bookish links. So I'm gonna check all that out and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye! thing is that next week I don't have to hide anything.